If you occasionally hear noises, this is why. Hi everyone, my name is Nastya. I am a self-taught software engineer who studied linguistics at school. And in this video, I wanted to share my journey of becoming a self-taught software engineer without having uh, a degree in computer science. To give you some context, I was born and raised in Moscow region, Russia. I moved to the United States right after graduation, so in my 20s, uh, and now I live here in Los Angeles, California, and now I also have this Golden Retriever pup. Was not supposed to be in this video? This video is not about him, uh, but it is about my journey of learning how to code on my own and finding my first full-time job here in the US, not only without a computer science degree, but only without local education. So I studied in Moscow State Linguistics University, and if you're curious about it, oh, why I chose linguistics and what it was like to study linguistics at university, then you probably should check out my, my last video on the channel. The link will be in the description. Without really going into the details about majoring in linguistics in this particular video, let's discuss how and why and when I decided to pivot to web development and software engineering. If you like this kind of content, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Me and Floki will be really grateful. Okay, how I decided to pivot. My last year at school, I decided to look around to better understand all the opportunities. I didn't want to teach, I didn't want to translate, so I basically didn't intend to do anything with my bachelor's degree in linguistics. Again, if you want to know why I chose it, you should probably watch the previous video. Well, I had a couple of side projects going that needed a website. And that's how I got into programming. Well, first, my first websites were built with uh, website builders and... <laughs> I am really sorry about this noise, but he definitely wants to be a part of this video. So my first websites were built for those side projects uh, and I used uh, website builders like not Wix or anything like it but Russian alternative to it called Tida uh, and also I got into web WordPress development and Webflow development uh, and eventually I also built websites with those technologies and CMS, CMS systems probably the right word here and while doing all of this I started learning HTML. I just got curious. Definitely, you don't have to know it if you build websites with WordPress because there are plugins you can use. But I just got curious about HTML and CSS and what are web pages exactly. Uh, and I took an HTML course on Coursera and it blew my mind. <laughs> uh, well, maybe seasoned, experienced software engineers uh, will laugh at me, but as someone who never had anything to do with development, HTML seemed to be so hard at the beginning. Like, wow. Um, and uh, well, now, it's lucky. Now it definitely doesn't seem so, but. So I got very curious about it and I also took CSS course and I just built a simple website with HTML and CSS for fun. Then right after graduation from Linguistic University, I moved to the United States and that was yet one more motivation to actually change my career. For one, I was teaching at that time, like part-time teaching. I was giving private lessons, but I always knew it, it wasn't something I wanted to do like full-time or my whole life, uh, the, the reason why teaching, I never enjoyed the social part of teaching. I think teaching requires involvement on a very deep level and I didn't really enjoy it. That's one reason. Second is that I wanted to learn something and be challenged. I already knew French pretty well and I was well, I already could speak English and I was speaking English, though I never taught it, uh, only French. But I didn't feel challenged by languages anymore. I think at some point when you already know the core grammar, vocabulary, phonetics, uh, well, there, there is nothing more you can learn. 
uh, well, except for maybe some more words, but I mean, phonetics and grammar, they don't really change. You can definitely get better, but it's not like you're learning something new. And I definitely wanted this feeling of, oh, wow, I don't know what's going on. That's not the reason and also moving to California, a very expensive state. Uh, well, America is overall is expensive for someone coming from Russia and learning money from Russia, uh, but California specifically. And I just wanted to be sure about my financial stability and my fi financial independence. And then imagine when I came, coronavirus, hit us and everything was closed in the US, well, especially in California, I'm speaking only about Los Angeles, everything was closed and I was bored. So it felt, it seemed logical to me to really start hustling and taking more projects in web development because I knew I enjoyed building things. Uh, and another, another important part is I had support. I had friends who supported me in this and who thought that web development was something for me because I always enjoyed learning new things and definitely thanks to those people who always believed in me. Surprisingly, you know, I never thought I would become a programmer or work anywhere close to it. Even though I always loved computers, I spent so much time when I was a kid playing video games or just playing around with my computer. I got a computer pretty early, my father did, but I was allowed to use it and to play video games and I loved it so much, but I never actually asked questions like, how does it work? Why does it work? And what's internet? And I never thought it can be my career. Overall, this is how I decided to pivot into programming and now how I learned coding on my own. Just as I mentioned at the beginning, I wasn't hustling. I merely was building websites for my side projects, for teaching French and selling online courses. That's all I needed. I didn't intend to become a full-time software engineer uh, just at the beginning. But when I did, when I realized that I want to build things professionally, I started learning on my own. I started with watching YouTube videos about recommendations for a beginner's programmer. Like if you search on YouTube or on Google, you can find videos like a roadmap to web development, front-end development, back-end development, software engineering, like uh, a lot of good stuff. And they basically lay out everything for you. They Talk about technologies that are popular now, things you can learn, and some also fundamental stuff. I picked a couple of resources, like, um, well, some documentations like MDN Docs or w, uh, W3 School, also some, some platforms like Open Classroom Platform with a lot of different courses, also Coursera and uh, Free Code Camp with a lot of practice, and I just started basically going through all the pages. So I revised uh, HTML and CSS part, and then I started learning JavaScript. And, oh God, that was tough. <laughs> learning JavaScript led me to just, a, I don't know, it was a burnout, I guess. I was learning, I couldn't understand why and what I'm writing and... Okay, let's get out of here. Let's go outside. Because Floki is going nuts. I started applying for full-time jobs here in the US maybe after six months. Six months after I decided to actually pivot to full-time 
uh, development and I didn't really have any success. I barely had interview in invitations uh, and I was really upset about it uh, and well I also knew I was at the disadvantage without having a lot of experience and also education but I still thought that maybe I can improve my resume and I thought even I could somehow learn and find a way to present myself better so I decided to take courses on how to create your resume and how actually to build your career overall it was quite a thorough course uh, about maybe choosing the best opportunity for yourself learning how to present yourself uh, and your skills uh, the best way uh, how to build your resume how to pass interviews how to prepare for all of it and I think it was very helpful uh, unfortunately I cannot recommend uh, that course because it was fully in Russian by a Russian person who worked with big companies smaller companies she's got a lot of experience but it's all in Russian for now that course gave me a lot of knowledge about how to actually build resume, create it, but also it gave me some confidence and reassurance that, well, even I could find a job, so it gave me motivation to keep going, and I started applying for jobs even more rigorously. I even counted uh, all the applications and rejections that I had. By the end of it, I had nearly 220 rejections overall, and that's actually funny how uh, at the beginning of the whole process it was hard to get rejections i would take all of them uh, too close to my heart uh, but by the end of it i didn't even care i just kept eating to the counter and that was it i also got a rejection from uh, a free coding school from an internship program from an apprenticeship program and i felt very discouraged when i actually got a uh, a recruiter in LinkedIn who approached with a very interesting job description. Just like that, via LinkedIn, I got a request uh, to interview for a Siri voice builder position with Apple that was kind of in the middle of programming and linguistics. Uh, again, I speak a little bit about it in my previous video, but I'll just repeat myself a little bit. So they wanted someone whose native language was Russian, who also graduated with a major in linguistics, um, who knew phonetics and who could also program with Python, uh, knew Git version control uh, and also some other things. And the description was almost perfect for me, so I decided to try it. Not, not really perfect, I still wanted to do more uh, web development things than voice building, but I still decided to go to the interview and eventually I got the job. So my first full-time tech job in the United States, it was computational linguist slash web developer with Siri TTS team. So I did do web development on that team. I was building internal tools for other voice builders. And also I was building uh, Siri voices myself for Russian Siri. And that was a lot of fun, but I still felt like I wanted to do more software engineering and the whole year that I spent there I was well in my free time I was always learning something related to web development and I did learn a lot of uh, interesting libraries and concepts during that time that offer from Apple wasn't the only one I got actually I also got one part-time WordPress developer role that I well I definitely rejected all of them because I accepted the Siri voice building linguist one and I had I think two or one full-time offer which was also something very interesting and just to remind you after 200 and 20 something rejections and then after that Siri was building role I switched to software engineering with Hugberry if you've never heard of Hugberry check the link down below it's not a net just a recommendation so to conclude this part I got my first tech job here in the US thanks to LinkedIn uh, and actually improving my LinkedIn profile was also something I did 
thanks to that course, that career course I mentioned in the beginning. They also highlighted the importance of having this professional network uh, and social profile. Uh, my strategy was to basically add everyone that I uh, had connected previously, like during all those networking events uh, that uh, I've been to and also to be kind of active a little bit, react to people's posts. Another recommendation I got is to connect to technical recruiters on LinkedIn so you can show up uh, closer to the top when some other recruiters search for someone similar to your profile on LinkedIn. Now I work as a software engineer and I plan to keep going in this direction. I am a big fan, by the way, of learning with books, so now, now I'm more studying patterns. So learning never stops. <laughs> I feel like if you want to be a developer, learning all the time is something you need to enjoy. It's something you're going to be doing. And it's also about books. Uh, I Well, I genuinely think that passing a coding interview is harder than actually doing the job. Uh, but doing challenges like on exorcism or, or lead code can be something helpful uh, and learning fundamental and learning fundamental concepts about algorithms, big annotation is all, also something helpful. And this book, this is a very popular book in web development world. It's also something that can be of help if you're preparing for a coding interview. It's Cracking the Coding Interview by McDowell. Gail McDowell. I don't think this book teaches you everything. Like, take for instance the chapter about algorithm. The description is quite short, but it's just a good book to recap and revise the concepts that you maybe already know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like this video and subscribe to my channel for more. And I'll see you in my next one. Au revoir!